from CareCo TV, one of the longest running outdoor programs on television today. Exploring the country and the coast in search of adventures. From the mountains of the great Northwest to the shores of the Atlantic Ocean, this is Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin. This week on Americana Outdoors, we're learning about quail conservation efforts with the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation in West Texas. But first, it's opening weekend in Kentucky once again. Our team has returned to Salt River Outfitters with their bows in hand and are excited to see what this weekend has to offer. One great aspect of being here during early season is velvet deer. And when the deer are in velvet, it adds to the uniqueness and character of the antlers. As the crew settle in and get their gear ready, let's check out the Yamaha side-by-sides that Steve Nessel brought along for their stay. I got to come up from my home and from Yamaha HQ down in Marietta, Georgia, and Wade and I talked about what do we want to bring, side-by-sides for sure, but what do we want to hunt out of? We've got a crew up here, it's not a big one, but I thought let's, let's bring the Viking and the Wolverine X4 in case we need to be moving people around and working stands, which we did. And to be able to park the trucks behind the house and just take these things quickly to and from the stands to get in and out, to get across that creek or through some rocky sections without bouncing around in a truck at five miles an hour when you can hit them at 10 to 20 in a UTV is, well, it's comforting. And that's really what we're trying to do is, is to put them in use, talk about them in season for sure, but the beauty of these machines really lies outside of season when you're prepping, you're running cameras, or you're setting up cameras, or you're running tree stands, and you're scouting, and just working the game and the land post and pre-season all year long. These things are not meant to be a three-month wonder. You don't just use them to get to and from the stands and put your harvest in the back. They're really intended to put your truck behind the barn or behind the house and beat on them because they're more apt than willing to take that abuse. One, because we build them durable and reliable, but two, because that's the actual intent for them existing. Is it so you can use them, you can beat on them, and that you can trust they're always gonna get the job done. We're getting right to the action this evening and joining Steve at a swamp stand he hunted last year. Located several hundred yards away from camp, this stand shows promise with the most daytime shooters coming to the camera, and Steve is hoping one of these deer will emerge and present the perfect shot opportunity. We get a cool velvet buck that's actually in the stages of shedding its velvet in real time, right there, right in front of us, probably as we get to be about six, seven o'clock that night. This deer is, is super cool looking. I mean, I, I have my bow on my lap, and, and he's there probably 15, 20 minutes, and I'm looking at Jeff, and I'm thinking, he's like he's like a hybrid. He's a half velvet, half hard horn deer. And, and I know I have the green light on this deer if, I'm, if I want to take it, but we also know there's bigger deer in the area. So I'm looking at Jeff, and he's looking at me, and he's probably thinking, what is Nestle doing? I don't know, what's, gonna, what's he gonna do? But I, eventually, he circles around, he's kind of pushing some does. Um, just doing what deer do. And I look at Jeff and I said, if he's around for a long time and it's getting late and he gives us a shot, there's a good chance we're gonna do this. But it never happened. It, it just never came to be because that deer, for whatever reason, had enough with that food plot, had enough with that setup, and he walked straight out of our lives to the left. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it was for the best because uh, things started to get pretty interesting pretty quick. Moving off to my left, and it's not, an, it's not a, a velvet deer, but it's a big hard horned buck and it's right on the edge and I can't see it very well. And Jeff's looking at it, he's got it. He's got good footage of that deer. It's down off, just right on the tree line, right on the edge and it's feeding and he's on it. And then here comes the deer I saw. When we come back, this buck leads Steve on an unforgettable track. 
Before the road trips, the cool mornings, the hot cast iron, the short nights, and the long cast. There's one stop that you can't afford to miss. It's time to gear up and camp out at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Save on all your camping essentials, in-store and online. Your adventure starts here. Trade hours for seconds. Inside every Yamaha lives the heart and soul of a competitor. The DNA of a champion. When you ride with us, it revs your heart and becomes a part of you too. Americana Outdoors presented by Garmin is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin Zero, leave the guesswork behind. Yamaha's proven off-road ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles. All right, so after giving the deer some more time, the crew drove down in the Yamaha side-by-sides to start tracking Steve's buck. Yeah, I did see him take it. He took a couple steps and then jumped. Right down through there, you crossed through this brush right here. 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 Here, here. Oh! <laughs> Get in that there, dude. buddy. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at you. I was like surely he could have shot no. up there. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> Look at that buck there, buddy. Oh, oh! Sorry, dude. What a deer. <laughs> I love it. Man, look how heavy that deer is. That is incredible. I, I did not, I stud. have to admit, I did not know he was that thick. What a stud. <laughs> what a stud. I am really happy I did you right, dude. Wow. <laughs> you know, when I said we come back after last year, we, uh, we had some, uh, I was tough hunting, but immediately wanted to come back, and this is the reason why. A chance at a Kentucky buck like this early season. We're a little later. He's got you see the remnants of the velvet. <laughs> it doesn't matter velvet or no. He is a stud. 
and he didn't go very far at all. I probably watched him take his last few steps from the stand, but I just was not sure of myself. Never really am. But I did a good job. We did a good job today, Jeff. As hunters in a really, really cool spot. And uh, I'm lucky for us. This guy gave us an opportunity. What a monster. What a monster. Yeah. 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 No, no, we've got this velvet coming off right here. We gotta kinda <laughs> we don't have to preserve it, we just gotta make sure we don't rip it while we get him out of here. And uh, just everything about this hunt. We knew it would be a good spot. I was afraid we were gonna get busted in the, the wind and <laughs> Congratulations, Steve, on an incredible memory and for bringing home such a unique buck. Well, coming up, we're heading over to West Texas, where we're meeting up with the Garmin team and Dr. Dale Rollins of the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation and gathering insight into quail conservation efforts. Stay tuned. To me, the Performance Center by Smith & Wesson means taking the best and making it better. Regardless if I'm passing on the traditions of hunting or teaching someone new about the outdoors, I know that using a Performance Center handgun will be something they will remember for the rest of their lives. Every model comes with an awesome trigger. They're reliable in all the conditions, as well as offering a variety of sight and scope mounting capabilities. The Performance Center by Smith & Wesson. Performance when it matters most. The Thompson Center Compass II. A feature-rich rifle packed with value and a higher standard of reliable accuracy. Now with generation two trigger and threaded muzzle, offered in scoped and non-scoped versions and in a wide variety of calibers, from the range to the fields to the mountains, TC has a rifle to match every hunter's needs. From the backwoods to the backyard, Sawyer's Permethrin, odorless insect repellent, repels and kills mosquitoes, ticks, and other harmful insects. And with just one application lasting for up to six weeks, you can enjoy the outdoors as much as we do. <laughs> Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by 10 Point Crossbows, Perfection lives here. Stealth Cam Digital Scouting Cameras. Proven. Wiley X. Go confidently. Conquest Sense. Hunting Sense and Dog Training Sense. Welcome back to Americana Outdoors. We're enjoying a rare snow day out in West Texas with the outdoors team from Garmin and renowned expert in all things quail, Dr. Dale Rollins of the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation. About 12 years ago, we met with some philanthropists from uh, Pennsylvania who were big players in the conservation fund, and we invited them to come out and go quail hunting with them. We were trying to raise money for the Bob White Brigade, which is a youth program that we do. Right away, I said, what you guys really need is a ranch in West Texas and let me manage it for quail research. And so we showed them three great years of quail hunting. Next thing we know, they said, we'd like to have a ranch in West Texas and let y'all manage it for quail research. So. We got that ranch in 2006, and since that time, we've tried to make it a model for quail conservation and research. Our motto is that we want to sustain Texas wild quail hunting heritage for this and future generations. As we journey through the brushy fields today, we'll have the opportunity to hear from Dr. Rollins on the importance of quail habitat management and how an organization like the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation approaches achieving these goals. Which is harder to manage for? Blues harder and Bob. Harder to manage for? Yeah. Blue quail are more forgiving in that when it's dry and hard or overgrazed, you can still have blue quail. Yeah. Uh, often here in Texas, they raise Angora goats and they raise Spanish goats. And the Spanish goats are the survivor of the two. They can get fat off the pavement. Blue quail are kind of like that relative to Bob Whites. All right. Are blues as dependent on early successional habitat as Bob's? Well, yes and no. Here in the West, the answer would be no. Now again, Bob Whites aren't either. 
again, if, if I'm talking about bobwhites in Missouri, I'm talking about I can get too much grass and I, I want to have more grazing, burning, whatever, to give me some bare ground. Bare ground is rarely a weak link for us. So we want to see actually a higher cereal stage, if you will, uh, where we've got a little bit more grass and so forth than what y'all would want to see further to the east. So again, grazing, that makes grazing ultimately important to us and regulating our stocking rate and stocking typically very lightly is the better thing for, for crow habitat in our latitude. Here's one of the more common food sources for blue quail in West Texas is called tasajilla. Some people call it jumping cactus or turkey pear. And these little red fruits, blue quail love them. And even here now we're hunting in early February, there's still an abundance of those. And sometimes you'll see almost a browse line, if you will, down low where they picked them all off. But you'll see blue quail sitting up in here and eating those tasajillas. So not only a source of winter food, but if it's dry, a source of moisture as well. So not a particularly enjoyable plant to hunt in because it gets all in you, but a good plant for quail. If there's anybody I want to get outshot by, it's Dr. Dale Rollins. Dead bird, Trace. That was a perfect covey rise. Tracer was locked down. Those birds held in the snow. Uh, I, they came up right on me. I should have had one, you know, one of those birds at least. But flock shot it, covey shot it. Call it what you want, but um, Dr. Dale, he dropped one. So Tracer's picked it up right now. I don't know, maybe we'll catch up to him, but. Overall, that was great. I mean, Dr. Rollins is a legend, so just being out here is really incredible. And, you know, getting to shoot a covey rise with him is something I'll remember for a long time. First thing I do when I get a bird, I want to know how old it was. So I look at these feathers right in here. The little white tips indicates a juvenile bird was hatched last summer. In the perfect world, 80% of the birds we put in our bag would be juvenile birds. It'd be a great barometer to last year's production. Uh, so what I've seen out here this year has been about 50 to 6 percent juveniles. Could be better, could be worse, but that's much better than a lot of areas for the east here. So they did have a decent nesting and hatch last summer. The second thing I do is I fill the crop. I just want to know if this one's empty, which for blue quail is unusual because blue quail, almost regardless of the time of day, they got something in their crop. Uh, they are great hustlers, and uh, like I said, this bird is not fed this morning, so bird in hand, you can learn a lot. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more quail hunting and insight on the status of quail conservation when we come back. Others decock. We do it safely. The new AccuSlide safe decocking system revolutionizes the crossbow market. Simply backwind the handle, stopping at any point without fear of damage, injury, or losing control. Meet the new Vengeant S440 and Viper S400 featuring the AccuSlide. Speed up to 440 feet per second, 5.8 inches wide. Its three and a half pound zero creep trigger delivers same hole accuracy. The Vengeant S440 and Viper S400 from 10 point. I love my Fusion wireless camera. It's the easiest cell cam I've ever set up. Download the command app. Scan the QR code. Everything's done on your phone. All kinds of affordable and different data plans. For as little as $5 a month, you can have your trail cam pictures sent right to your cell phone. You can go into the app, you can change all the camera settings, you can change all the upload settings, and it's got a feature where you can map out where your cameras are. It shows you when the activity has been in front of your cameras. Check it out, the Fusion wireless camera from Stealth Cam. It's in our nature to protect, defending our heritage, our way of life, and the ones we love. It's your right. Don't give it up. Protect it or lose it. Walkers. Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by Engel the original high-performance cooler. 
Sawyer Products. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. Outdoor Action TV. Stream your favorite shows. As with all nonprofits, the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation faces its own unique set of challenges. Anytime you're dealing with a nonprofit, probably 95% of our funding comes from donations. With the ranch, our operating costs are about $400,000 a year. Those are the hardest dollars to raise. We've been very fortunate to have a partnership with Quail Coalition in Texas, and especially the Park Cities Quail Coalition in Dallas. They've been the wind under our research wings. Then beyond your operating dollars, if you want to say, well, we want to go study blue quail out in the Permian Basin, well, you got to find the dollars to do that. So again, that's always a challenge. Typically, a study is going to cost you somewhere between $100,000 and $200,000 a year to do a master's level research or PhD kind of thing. So again, identifying what you want done and then finding the people who are well healed enough to say, we want to support that. A key component of operating a research facility is making observations and asking questions. Over recent years, wildlife biologists have seen a decline in quail populations despite decent habitat conditions. In order to counter with this decline, Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation kicked off Operation Idiopathic Decline, which came to be the largest study of disease and parasites in bobwhites and blue quail in the world. We studied quail over 35 different sites in West Texas and Western Oklahoma with a team of scientists. And the two things that came out of that that we think had the greatest significance were two parasites. One, an eye worm that resides behind the eye. The other one, a sequel worm, which resides down in the gut. So since that time, we've worked extensively with the Wildlife Toxicology Lab at Texas Tech University and Dr. Ron Kendall. And our goal is having a medicated feed approved by the FDA that will take out those eye worms and sequel worms. To learn more about this research initiative or to donate to the foundation, visit quailresearch.org. As we rejoin this quest for quail, Ray Hun has just taken his first bird of the day. I but appreciate I tell you, that. Every quail's a trophy, I, but a blue quail behind pointing dogs, that's a rare gem. That's an absolute rare gem. I appreciate it. Thank you so much yeah, for coming well, out today. I'm glad y'all could join us. Oh, absolutely. It's an incredible little bird, you know? See, there he is. And so you're saying that no spots there? No, no. You see the little faint, faint brown streaks? Yeah. A little faint. That's a hen. And then on the wing, what you're looking for is what's called the primary coverts. These feathers right here, yeah. the white tips, yeah. that indicates a juvenile. So that bird was hatched. The white tips hatched. right there. Right there. That bird was hatched last summer. And like I said, about 60% of the birds or so we've been shooting here this year have been juveniles, which is a pretty good mark. Ideally, it'd be 80%, but uh, that indicates that we've had some population growth this past year. Bird up. Good shot. Nice. The dogs are working hard. And before Dr. Rollins has a chance to retrieve his blue quail from Gus, another bird flushes right before their eyes. Nice shot, Steve. Man, these blue quail, these things are awesome. You know, it's like you remember, there's certain hunts you, you remember, right? And it's one of these for me is gonna be Dr. Rollins hunting with his two setters here with Steve. I just picked up a bird on the rise with Dr. Rollins, which is, that's incredible. Those are those things that you remember and, you know, wild birds out here with Dr. Rollins and Steve and you hear all these things about blue quail, how hard they are and stuff like that. And they are an incredible bird, but we've just been really, really lucky. Great points, great dog work. These birds have been holding well. They're doing great things. And this is that high point of the season. I'm glad it's the end of the season because there's no way it's getting better than this. So this one is kind of a question that's like, this it looks like the scaling almost goes down further onto the breast a little bit, or is that just because this is missing some feathers yeah, in probably, there? Yeah, and the scientific name is Calipepla squamata, squamata meaning scale-like. So you can see that looks just like you know, mm -hmm. scales on fish. Man, cool birds. Good shooting, guys. Good shooting all around. <laughs> Good dog <laughs> work. Because <laughs> this is what a backdrop for an interview. Yeah. That was on point. Yeah. And I held. Well, it's been a nice day. Yeah. yeah. It's been a Come on! Day. Come on! Come on! Tracer, let's go!
That's a wrap on hunting blue quail in West Texas under some of the most bizarre conditions we've seen on screen. The Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation focuses on one thing, understanding and managing bobwhite and scaled quail in West Texas. If you're in the, the Texas, the Rolling Plains, Southern Plains area, you can become a student of quail. That's what I call it. Somebody that's interested, they're passionate about blue quail and bob white quail. And then they find out more again about what we're doing. We're about to uh, kick off, hopefully for the, within the next year, a multi-university collaboration on blue quail here in the Permian Basin. So some big things are coming in the future. Uh, again, working with some other universities and scientists, many of whom I've known because some of, several of them are my past graduate students kind of thing. The quail world is a small, tightly knit world, and we're looking forward to some great things coming in the future. To learn more about how you can get involved with the foundation, either through contributing to fundraising efforts or getting hands-on experience through research initiatives, visit quailresearch.org. Hey, thank you for watching, and join us next week on a new episode of Americana Outdoors. Americana Outdoors is a CareCo TV production. From sun up to sun down, day in and day out, we work hard, we play hard, and to keep us going during those long hours, we demand performance. Angle Coolers, the original high performance cooler. Want to know why the top shooting pros choose HiViz? HiViz has an enormous lineup of sights for every shooting platform possible that are clean looking and easy to mount. Improve your shooting with faster target acquisition and eliminate cross-eyed dominance. HiViz sights are the brightest out there, helping you find your target with ease no matter the shooting conditions. Choose the best, choose HiViz, and see what you've been missing. God made a deer farmer, a person who stays up at night to save a sick fawn's life, gets up and still goes to work at sunrise. This person works in the heat, the cold, and the rain. He needs to feed his animals, make sure they have water. If the water's frozen, he must break it so they can drink. He needed somebody to collect real scents and smells from deer, to provide hunting scents to the hunters so they could feed their families. So God made a deer farmer.